Ainda. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, Clouds and sail in heaven along. Oh, praise him. Alleluia. Thou morning sun with praise rejoice. Daylights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. sing high, every valley sing low, and everything in between sing harmony. Every mountain sing high, every valley sing low, and everything in between sing harmony. Every mountain sing high, every valley sing low, and everything in between sing harmony. Let all things their Creator bless, and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Good morning, and welcome. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings and psalm can be found in the Red Worship 1196. The opening hymn is also in the Red Worship 833. All are welcome. We will sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5. 833. Three. Please stand. Build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts turn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rocks of faith and vault of grace. The love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us 
Let's build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Hear the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ's love, peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all our name, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed, as words within the word, built up tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once yourselves aliens in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner towards him by demanding interest from him. If you take his cloak as a pledge, you shall return it before the sun sets. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out, I will hear him. I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my Savior. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock, where I take refuge, my shield, my saving strength, my stronghold, I cry out, praised be the Lord, and see I am saved from my foes. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his King and shows merciful love for his anointed. I love you, I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, You know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word with great affliction and with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly decry about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, from whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Oh. Uh. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus gives us these two commandments today. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And of course, to love your neighbor as yourself. It's two, the two great, the two great commandments Remember, when I was younger, and even still now, when I listen to other preachers, there's, there's, there, there's often drawn that deep, deep connection between these two commandments, which can never be underestimated, or it needs to be said again and again. But, what I, but I, as I was praying over the scriptures today, I just kept stopping over the first commandment. And I want to hover over that and just unravel it a little bit more so that we can dive even more deeply into it. And I, I just wanted to say that first, it's not to, it's not in any way to diminish the power of the second commandment. We will get back to that briefly, but, the, but there's a deep connection between the two. But I want to just hover over the first commandment today, especially because it grabbed me today. So when I, when I was younger, I used to listen to this commandment. It's, it's a beautiful commandment. I remember being drawn and caught up in it. This is the greatest commandment. That's all we have to do. Just follow this commandment. And I remember trying to love the Lord, you know, with my whole mind, my whole heart, my whole soul, and doing what I could, you know, whatever. When I was doing my chores, I'm going to do it with everything, you know. And, it, and I, I'm sure that God is very pleased very, very pleased when we do it, when we do something like that or make those kinds of efforts. But it doesn't take very long to realize that's really hard <laughs> to love in that way, to, to love with all of our mind, all of our hearts, and all of our souls. And the trouble with seeing that something is hard is that we begin to believe, well, I, I'll never be able to do it. And so eventually, we just leave it behind. <laughs> and sometimes we might, even if, you know, even if we didn't go at it as a little child like that, we might listen to this commandment and believe, I can't do it. And that, there's something wrong, there's, there's a trouble with that. The Lord never gives a command that he doesn't really desire us to fulfill. But of course, there's the other side too. The Lord never gives a command that he doesn't desire to help us all the way to help us in, in fulfilling that command. And that's the way I want to lean into today, the way that God helps us. There's another way of looking at this command, and a way, the, the way for us to begin to, to lean into it even more deeply. And so to get into it, I, I want to look at just at what's being commanded here. So looking at our mind, our heart, and our souls. 
It's beautiful that the, that God, that Jesus broke that open, our mind, our hearts, and our souls. Jesus here is pointing out there's a lot more to us that sometimes we think. There's so much, you know, going on here. Our minds, our hearts, and our souls. We look at our minds, and there's obviously so much there. And if your mind is like mine, it's racing all the time. <laughs> but there's more that there. What, what's all in our minds? It's what ca- what's it, it, that's where our imagination is. And to say imagination, I'm not just talking about fan- fantastical imagination. It's our vision, how we see the world, even how we view God. In, in our minds is how we view ourselves, how we look at others. It's the, the, the way we approach the world, and the way in our, in our minds is the whole map, the way that we navigate the world. And the things that we tell ourselves, the, the thoughts that we have about others. All of that. Of course, there's depth, depth, depth in a way that far beyond that any one of us, even, even if it's in our own mind, we don't have control over it. It's there and, it's, and there, there's so much that, that's present within our minds. Then we have our hearts and there too, such a mystery, a world unto itself. You know, there with, with all of our desires, and some of us, of course, we, you know, we tap into those deepest, deepest longings, those deepest desires, the deepest part of our heart. But then we know that there are also surface-level desires, and sometimes desires that lead us down paths that are not helpful. Also present in our hearts, in a sense, is all of our woundedness. You know, there where we, where it sprouts out little, just to be silly, little nasty fruits of jealousy, of anger, fear, lust. Uh, despair, all of those, those painful parts sometimes that, that sprout in our hearts. And sometimes when they, they, when they show themselves, it's like, where did that come from? Or maybe we know very well where that came from. But there's a part of our hearts that we don't control, you know, <laughs> that, it, that it's a part of the mystery of our hearts. And then, of course, our souls. In a way, I I kind of think of our world, and sometimes our world has forgotten about our souls. We're so exterior. But even to proclaim the mystery of our souls is to say that there's something far deeper in ourselves that, again, we don't have control over, but, there, but, but it, we're, we're deeper than we know. We are so interior. There's a, a wonder that's present within us. So here, so in a way, that's... Kind of, I'm sure there are some Aristotelians here who might say, well, that's not exactly <laughs> how we view the Christian per- person, but it's part of how we view it. And so the, this, this, this mystery, how complicated we are, and we, of course we, we do have control over certain parts, but there's a part of us that we look at our lives and we see we are so in need, so greatly in need. And so how do we love God with our minds, our hearts, and our souls when we are so in need? (laughs) How do we do that? How do we do it? And a lot of our spiritual writers have given an answer to that. And in a way, it's, it's very simple, but it's beautiful, and it's something that we can do. We can do every day of our lives. And it's simply this. It's to give God, our minds, to give God our hearts, to give God our souls. That might sound really simple, but what does it mean? If we give God our minds, then all of our vision, all of our imagination, all of our thoughts then become His. And by that I don't mean that all of the thoughts that now that are in our mind are, are now directly from Him. What I mean is, they belong to him. They are for him to speak to. They're for him to, in a sense, correct. But of course, with with his goodness, with his mercy. Of course, we do that by our prayer. When we go before God, spend time before him, we present our minds to him. Speak to me, God, about your goodness about your truth, 
about your beauty. Fill in. Let me see the world the way you see it. We give God our minds. That's, by, that's how we love him in a way, by giving him our minds. And the same with everything else. Our hearts are so wounded and broken and beaten up at times. Of course, fully elated at other times, filled with desire at others. This heart, God, which you have created and which you love, this one is yours too. Yours to do with what you want, which is to fill with your goodness, your beauty, your truth. Speak to the wounds that I know are there, that come up constantly. My, my doubt, my fear, my anger. This is for you. My heart is yours to do with as you want. And he's good. That's part. Of, so sometimes we say, oh, if God's going to do what he wants, he's going to do something terrible. But God is good. That's what we lean into. God is good. God is good. So we give our hearts to him. And then our souls, of course which are bigger than we imagine, more capacious, more, 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 more able to be filled. We give him our souls, those parts of our lives that we, that we don't even see. That's yours too, God, to do with as you want, to fill with your life, your eternal life. We give it to you. It's part of the mystery of, of who we are. It's part of the joy of being human. It's the joy of being Christian to give our lives, the whole, all of our interior life to God, to do with as he wants. In a beautiful way, then, he becomes our interior life. That might not make sense, but that's, it's true. He becomes our interior life. And so that, in a way, that's, that's a beautiful way of fulfilling this command to love God with your mind, your heart, and your soul. The, the best way that we can love him in that way, is to allow him to love us. It sounds counterintuitive, but God is love. We we're told that in the scriptures. And if we want to love God, we have to let him be who he is. And he is love, and so he loves us. St. John says, you know, in this is love. Not that we have loved him, but that he has loved us. And so we let him do it. It's part of our, our joy to, to allow him to love us. And beautifully, just to draw a quick connection to our second commandment, to love our neighbors as ourselves. In a way, looking at this first commandment a little more deeply, we see how important it is to allow that to be fulfilled all the way. Because I think we, if we're honest, sometimes we don't love ourselves all that much and, or we don't do it very well and so we present ourselves to God to be loved and then to, the invitation of course is to be filled with that light and then to love our neighbor in that way to love our neighbor all the way and today of course beautifully as we are presenting our bodies but also our minds and our hearts before our Lord and the Eucharist he gives himself to us Lavishes, his, lavishes us with his love. So our homework is just to be done today. Give your minds to him. Give your hearts. Give your souls. Allow him to love you more deeply today. Let's stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, we turn to him with our needs. For the Church, the Body of Christ, may the Holy Spirit enkindle within the Synod of Bishops a fire of unity that leads all of her members on a stronger path to truth, goodness, and beauty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials that they may pursue legislation and policy that reduces hunger, homelessness, unemployment, and poverty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those that have lost a loved one, those who have been left widowed and orphaned, that they may find the love and care they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the tensions escalating in the Middle East, may they be transformed by the peace that comes from God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that tirelessly work for the benefit of those in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of our parish, for, for Micah Mampegi Mbabwe and Eleanor Norma Kettle, who are baptized in our church this weekend. For those that are sick and homebound, especially Nora Brooks. For those that have died, especially Dorothy McGuigan. And for whom this holy mass is offered, Michael Stadola, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, you hear the cries of the widow, the orphan, and the impoverished. Grant that we may hear their cries as well, may recognize them as your precious children, and share your compassion with them. Hear this and all our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The preparatory hymn is in the Red Worship 699. Law, love is the law that Jesus taught, 699. Jesus taught and prophets struggled to impart all love for God sincerely sought with soul and strength and mind and heart for God is love the love that gave of all in race his only Son, a love embracing cross and grave to see a world salvation won. That love of God in Jesus known transfigures every thought and deed. The love we show ourselves be shown in friendship to our neighbor's need. If 
love be all we need to know in earth beneath our heaven above enlist us lord while here below as learners in your school of love Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be, may be accepted by my. Thank you. <laughs> and the good of all the church. I'm just a priest in such great need. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service, may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Jesus. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is in the Blue Gather, 596, Bread for the World, 596.
died for the world, a world of hunger. Mine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out our love. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life, broken to reach and heal the wounds of human pain. Where we invite your people, you are waiting there, on bended knee to wash our feet with endless care. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out your love. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the wine of Poured into hearts once broken and where dryness sleeps. Where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond despair. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out our love. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to your feast, at which the rich and powerful have become the least, where we survive on others in our among us begging for your every need. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink
was crying, Lord, come by here. Someone's crying, Lord, come by here. Someone's crying. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our announcements. Wednesday, November 1st is All Saints Day, a holy day of obligation or holy day of opportunity. Masses will be here at 9.15 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. that day. Following the 6.30 p.m. Mass on All Saints Day, we will host a reception following Mass with Chaplain Bob Barnes, who will share a brief talk on grieving and loss and all are welcome to attend. November is the month of remembrance. We invite everyone to bring in pictures of loved ones who have passed away and to put them on the table in the gather space beginning next weekend through the month of November. Please note that our Centering Prayer Group has changed the meeting day to Thursdays at 8.30 a.m. We're still looking for one or two others to take the 10 p.m. slot for adoration on Thursdays. If you're interested and would like to sign up, please do so on our parish website through Adoration button on the front page. Our Notre Dame Academy School, the community, is gathering for our, their annual trivia night this coming Saturday, November 4th. All are welcome to come to that, but you need to sign up beforehand. 
If you want to make a, a, another use of your costume and show off your intelligence, you can check out the, um, the website, and also there's more information on our bulletin today. But it's a fun, fun evening, and, and all are welcome to come to that. And then finally, uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of very sad news. One of our, our very long-time cantors, Paul Armstrong, who's singing with us today, this is going to be his last weekend. He's been with us for well over 10 years, and I know we've all been filled with gratitude for the gift of his voice and help, helping us worship. So let's, get, let's show him our gratitude today. He is going to be involved with our even song this coming year, so if, you, if you'd like to still hear him, you're, you're welcome to do so in that way. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is in the Blue Gather, 518, We Are Called. We will sing stanzas two and three. Five one eight. Oh. 